Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be continuing development of our web application, incorporating what we've learned about objects so far. Uh, today's lesson is going to cover version 5.0 of the web application, uh, and as said, it's going to cover uh, in basically inserting objects into our web application, changing it from an application that used that modeled items and departments, for example, as associative arrays into one that models them uh, as actual uh, PHP objects. We're going to have sort of a, a quick lesson on um, how to output object properties within double quoted strings. And then we're also going to talk about um, accessing uh, object properties that are arrays and how to access, um, basically use the square bracket syntax to access values in those arrays. So again, basically what we're, we're doing is we're taking these items and department sort of objects that we had in our application. Before they weren't official PHP objects, but we sort of modeled them as that as an associative array. Um, for example, we'd pass around to different functions uh, maybe an item associative array that contained a number of different keys. For example, name that would represent the name of the array, I mean the name of a particular item. What that allowed us to do was to basically pass around all of the information about a particular item sort of in one variable, in this case, item. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to officially create that item data type, that department data type, by creating item and department objects. And what that's going to do is, uh, so now, well, first of all, instead of passing associative arrays between functions to um, access item information, we're going to be passing um, item and department objects. Uh, in between functions and we're going to be accessing item and department objects rather than arrays. What that's going to do is it's going to change how we access our item properties from the square bracket syntax that is used here um, to the op object property property accessor syntax which is the dash followed by the greater than sign which we learned about in the last lesson. So for example now if we have an item object that had been instantiated, that had been created um, using the object accessor syntax now this is how we're going to access uh, the variable, the property name, or how we're going to uh, how we're going to refer to it to set its value. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and take a look at what our item and uh, department classes look like. Um, here you can see in our documentation that's generated by PHP Documenter, uh, you can see there's a new um, section on the left hand side here called classes. And what it does is it provides documentation about the different classes in our web application. You can see the, the department and item class. You also see a customer class, which we're going to talk about in a second, which is another object um, we've defined, or another class we've defined for this um, web application. So if we look at the item class and we look at the source code for it, um, we can see that we've defined this class called item with a capital I. That's the convention. And if uh, you actually look at the structure of a web application, it's uh, the name of the file that this class definition is defined in is called item.php with a capital I. It's in our classes directory, which is in our includes directory. Um, and again, this follows the uh, one class definition per file convention, where we only have one cla de class definition in each file. And we can see that we've def defined five different properties for an item object or an item class. Um, it has a string property, which is the item ID. It has a string properties for the name, the description, and the image file extension, and then it has a float property um, for uh, the price. And you can see here we've defined them using the public uh, keyword as we had talked about uh, in our last lesson. And so that basically represents um, is an item object now. So now um, instead of using an associative array to access all these properties, we're going to we're going to access uh, them as an object. If we look at our department class, um, we can see that it has three properties: department ID and name. Uh, or two of them, both of which are string properties. We can also see that it has the items uh, property, which is actually an array. It's an index array, if you'll remember, of all of the item IDs that a particular department, uh, for, that represent all the items in a particular department. So what this sort of shows is that the properties of a class can be of any PHP data type. Here we have strings and array. Uh, in the item class, we had strings and floats. Uh, and you can actually even include, um, have properties that are objects themselves, uh, which we'll see in, in, in some later lessons, where actually properties defined in a particular class will be um, data types that are actually um, other objects or other class, uh, class types. Uh, and so what we've done is now that we've created all of these these different classes, or we've created this item and department class, we basically have to go through our web application and update all of the functions uh, that used 
these associative array syntax for accessing our item and department information, um, as well as any of the pages that access that information using associative array. And it's been done in a number of different spots. There's a lot of spots in our application that have, have, have uh, done that and been updated. And we're not going to be able to go through all of them in the lesson. Uh, but all of the changes are actually noted in the change log uh, for version 5.0. But I'm just going to go through and, and basically go through a um, talk about a couple of the different changes that were made. Uh, for example, if we look at our, our file library, um, we can see that our build depart now we have a new a new function called build department object. Um, whereas before when we read, for example, an item from departments when we read a line from departments.txt and we use the explode function on it to extract all the information about a particular department, we used a function, if we look at our uh, last course's document last version's documentation called create department data array. And what it would do is it created this associative array that represents the department. Well, now instead of creating a, a department array, we're going to create a department object. So we've um, defined, we've actually gotten rid of that create department array object I, function. We also got rid of the create item data array function. We replaced them with build department object and build item department, uh, build item object respectively. And as you can see, for example, in the build department object, uh, we still take in an array that contains information in, in a line in departments.txt. And now instead of uh, creating an empty array for our department variable, we uh, call the, um, we define a new department object using the new keyword. And then we use the, um, the accessor syntax to go ahead and set its department and name values. And then also down here, we use it to actually set the, um, its <coughs> items property to the array of all of the different items IDs. And so this is what we're going to use now to basically uh, build our department objects from, uh, uh, from our departments.txt file. Likewise, the build item object works in the same way. It just it has, um, it well, it de defines a new instance of an item object. Um, and then what it does is it sets all the different properties. It just has more properties that it sets. Um, so for example, now uh, our create department data string function has been updated, whereas before we passed an associative array of department information. Now we're actually passing it, if we look at the documentation for it, we can see that the uh, argument that, or the parameter that it takes is still called department, but it's actually a department object. Whereas in our previous version, we could see that uh, department was an array, and as it says here, it's an associative array defining information um, on all of the information in, a depart in our department. Um, one thing to note is that, uh, for example, um, in our create item data string, for example, this is our new version, version 5.0, um, and we can see that what it does is this one actually takes an item object now. Uh, so now actually moving on to the, to the string, this takes an item object um, and basically creates an item string that we're going to store in our items.txt file. Similarly, create department data string now takes a department object. Um, and what it will do is it will create a string to store in our department data file. As you can see, it uses this accessor uh, syntax to access the different items, different properties of the department, as well as the different properties of a particular item. So basically, we've just gone through and updated all the different methods. Um, for example, get department now actually returns a department object as opposed to an associative array. Um, you can see in the, the uh, documentation for this, you can see it returns a department object. Get departments um, actually returns an, an indexed array of all of the departments, um, a, an indexed array containing a department object for each department in our store. Uh, so for example, if you look at the documentation, it says that it returns an array, and the array is of department objects, whereas before um, it was an array of, of associative arrays describing those uh, different departments. So that's uh, uh, another thing to note is that um, arrays can actually contain any data type, including um, we know that we, they can contain other arrays, integers, booleans, all the scalar data types, uh, but they actually can also hold uh, objects as well. So in this case, we're returning an array of, of um, department objects. Uh, so Basically, this is sort of the pattern for the rest of these uh, functions as they've all been updated to use departments, uh, to use the department and item objects. Um, additionally, if we look at, for example, item.php, um, we can see that this is one of our pages, for example. Um, 
Now when we call get current or get item at the beginning of item.php, it's actually going to return an item object. And so you can see that now um, when, for example, we set the title of our, our uh, item.php page, we're using an object accessor syntax. Uh, whereas if we look, for example, at an older version of our web application and look at item.php, you can see that we use the uh, associative array syntax. So basically, we've updated all the functions to use objects and their objects accessor syntax, as well as all of our uh, different pages that um, that access objects or that access that previously accessed associative arrays. Uh, one other thing to note is that we also created a, a customer class, which is used with the checkout.php form. Um, if we look at our old version of checkout.php, we can see that basically we had this uh, cust data array that we used to uh, include all of the information, uh, represent all of the information submitted on a, um, the checkout form when the user submits their shipping address and so forth. Um, for example, it has like the, the street address, their first name, their last name, and so forth. And it basically was an associative array. Um, and we used it in a couple of different functions. For example, in our email order function, we would pass it um, this customer data uh, associative array. And email order would be able to extract information about that. Well, now we've basically updated our email order function to um, use, instead of using this cust data array, actually what it's going to do, if we look at version 5.0, You can see that what actually we've done is uh, now we're actually, when we call the email order function, we're actually passing in a customer object. And you actually can see up here that um, we actually create the customer object within this data processing section. So we basically um, declare a new instance of the uh, customer class, and then we set its different values. And if we actually go and look at uh, the code for our customer class, we can see that it basically just represents all the same or has all the same properties that our cust data associative array used to have. It has a, a string prop, they're all string properties for first name, last name, street, apartment, city, state, and zip code. So now we basically um, encompassed all of the information about a, a, a customer shipping information um, into a customer object that we can pass around. So any functions that use that cust data associative array before now use the customer uh, function. Uh, so one topic that I, I want to talk about was um, how to output object properties within double-quoted strings. Um, we know that you can output arrays in double-quoted strings. For example, associative array. This is supposed to be a curly brace. We can output using this curly brace syntax. Well, we can also do the same thing for object properties. So for example, let's say we have a echo statement and we want to output as a string um, the name of this item number one object. Well, the way you do that is you basically use the accessor syntax on the item one to get the property you want, and you just simply enclose it in curly braces. So for example, if we go look at item.php, and we look down at the there's a call uh, that we're down in the output section that outputs the item's image. And one of the things that you have to pass to the output image function is the name of the image file that you want to output. Well, the way we build that up is from the item ID, followed by a period, followed by the image uh, file extension of that particular item. Well, here you can see we've created a string. Um, and we've included, using the curly brace syntax, we were able to include the item ID and the image file extension of uh, this particular item that this page represents. So cur item is actually an instance of an item object. And by um, enclosing them in curly braces, we actually can output that within double quoted strings. Uh, so that's a nice feature of uh, being able to output object properties within strings. Another thing that we had mentioned earlier is that object properties can actually be uh, arrays themselves. Uh, so for example, in our, in our department object, look at the source code for it. Um, we have this items uh, property, which actually is an indexed array. Um, so what we can do is, if we want to access uh, values in that particular um, array that's a property of that object, there's a particular syntax that we use. So for example, um, basically what you do is, 
you use the accessor syntax to access um, access that particular uh, array property. So for example, if we had department one, which was a department object, um, the way we would get access to that items array or the items property would be to use this accessor syntax. Uh, and then what you can do is directly append to the end of it a square bracket syntax, just as we did with any other array to access different values of it. So for example, to access the first item in the items prop in the items property of this department one object, you just append uh, the square the square bracket syntax uh, right after the accessor, uh, right after basically you access the the um, particular property. So essentially, it's the same as if we had gone maybe created a temporary variable that said a equals department one dash items and then accessed it as a zero. We can actually do that just directly in one statement by just directly appending the square bracket syntax. That also works for associative arrays too, so this actually could be a key, uh, string key. Uh, and you can do this to set values as well. In this case, we were getting um, the first element of this items array of the department one object. Um, in this case, we are setting the first item, the first element of the items array of the department one object, um, just using an assignment operation. And actually, if we look at um, our add item to department function, that's been updated to use objects. Um, we can see that. Uh, Basically, add item to department is, is what we've been using to um, add an item ID uh, to the items array of a particular department. So here, the way that we do that is we uh, access that items property, which is an array. Um, we use the accessor syntax, and then we just append uh, our square bracket syntax to it. And um, square brackets, as you know, as we know with arrays, if you don't put anything in between them and you use them in assignment statement, just says add another item another element to that array. So this is basically saying, get this items array, append another element to it, and have it have the value item ID. Uh, now this is supposed to, if we look at um, add item to department in our last version, uh, we can see that we actually use this sort of multi well, we did use a multi-dimensional array syntax uh, because our department object was represented as an associative array. Um, so that's basically an example of how you can directly, um, in sort of one statement as opposed to two up here, um, you can directly access um, uh, values in an array in an object. So that ends today's lesson. Thank you for watching educator.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.